Welcome to beautiful, sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And as you can tell from the yachts behind us, we are going to be stepping into a different world today. <laughs> We're going to be boarding a Hampton 660 motor yacht. Woo. All right, now you may recognize these two faces. This is Victoria and Rico from Naughty Slot. Uh, <laughs> welcome on board. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Now that was the awkward, like we pretended like we haven't all been here already. Hi guys. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Victoria and Rico are, I'm gonna have you give like the 30 second elevator pitch of what you do over on Naughty Styles. Naughty Styles is our channel where we do yacht walkthrough videos. Today we're going to check out a unique model by CDM. We cover all sorts of different yachts. We have an affordable liverboat yacht series. We do like $200,000 yachts and then we do mega yachts, just any kind of yacht. Which is how we first saw their channel, watching some of the catamaran walkthroughs. And now here we are in Florida. They're actually building a new steel explorer yacht. Crazy project. You can check that out over on Naughty Guys. And it's M-A-U-T-I, guys. It's, it's not a different kind channel. of naughty. <laughs> and shout out to you guys. They're also Patreon. Yes. Woo! That's what makes all these videos possible. <laughs> Thank you. But what we're doing today is going to be kind of stepping into their world because they cover all of these yachts, certainly yachts that we have never even remotely attempted to get on. So it's been fun to watch from a distance, right? Fun to tour through. But we wanted to do something sort of in the affordable liveaboard category. This is still at the top end of that, but that's also because we just wanted to see what does like a million dollar yacht really look like? What does that space look like? What's the cost? of that and kind of just the comparison of what we do with our 44 foot live aboard sailing catamaran versus something like this because buying waterfront property in Fort Lauderdale or in Miami is at least a million dollars like to get a four bedroom apartment or condo in either one of these cities would easily be well over a million. So this is kind of the idea of what if you had a yacht instead which you could then still take to like the Bahamas and explore. What does that all look like? So that is what we are doing today. And with the experts in this category. So where to first? Our tours are like super, super detailed. And I don't know if you guys have that much time. So we'll try to go, <laughs> no. we'll try to go a little bit faster than usual. I feel like I should also say we're saving the best for last because well, it's that way you watch the whole video. I don't know, I'm just gonna be honest. So stick around to the end. You have these cool staples here. You have a receptacle here for what, a swim what, ladder. What are these called again? Staples. Why do they call them? Oh, because maybe because they look like really like big staple. staple? Yeah. Oh my gosh, pointing out obvious, okay. Other than like being kind of something to hold on to, what is the purpose of these? It's really safety and safety. if you come up with a tender, it's easy to get on and off, something to grab onto. Okay. Yeah. Let's not get lost in that. I know, yeah, but it's like, these are the things that I'm like, we don't have anything like this. You don't have staples? No. <laughs> we know what to give them for their housewarming gift. It's sta staples. It's staples. Some yeah. carbon fiber staples. <laughs> this is a pretty unique layout um, for this size of a vessel and type of a vessel. You've got the swim platform, but you also have this lower cockpit and a upper cockpit. So this could be used as a really good fishing space. And even like a scuba? Like, yes. Like everything Diving. wet because this is all going to drain. It's all clean. Everything's contained. Fish cleaning station, yeah, I mean, I can see this being used for a lot. It's a great space. And what's interesting about it as well, which I have personally never seen before, this mm. space has an entrance into our master. So oh, from out here? From out here, as well as in the interior. So we'll see that later, but it is really unique. And right here is our... I want to say it's a big lazarette. Oh, wow. wow. It's a massive lazarette, actually. Okay, oh, here's give a... me the yeah. camera and I'll show you what's in here. Here is the sideboarding ladder. And that one goes up and down with the tide. So you can always board the vessel. And then here is the secondary generator. There's another one in the engine room, which you're going to see in a little bit. Here on the starboard side, as well as on the port side, we have a water tank. This whole contraption. Jason, you know what that is. It's a steering bar. It's a steering <laughs> rudder bar. It's a steering bar. We got the hydraulic steering, so super easy access to everything. That's pretty amazing. And then we got a couple of sea strainers here. One for the generator. The other one I want to assume is for an air condition. And there we got a massive stern thruster, a side power unit. Oh, and before we move on, I just wanted to say another big reason that we are doing this is because sometimes there is a big divide between motorboaters and sailors. <laughs> motorboaters? <laughs> it feels wrong. 
You motorboat and son of a bitch. You old sailor, you. Power butters. Power butters. <laughs> there could be opinions that swing drastically one direction or the other. And we wanted to step into this world, see what it's like, talk numbers, what are expenses, maintenance, what's similar, what's different. And that is sort of what all of this is about. But also because at some point in time, you reach a point where maybe sailing is, maybe you're just not physically able, you just don't have the energy anymore. You want something a little less complicated while power boating and yachting in this way can be more approachable. It can be easier. And that's another reason to kind of explore this. It's another way to get out on the water, to live this lifestyle, but maybe with a little less complication. We'll find out. Where are we headed? We are going all the way forward. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sideboarding door <laughs> and aft station. So here we have the helm obviously up in the sky lounge and yep. you have another docking station right here on the aft. Oh, cool. So you get the shift and throttle controls and then we get our bow and stern thruster control. And this allows it to be easier to dock or easier to move out of a marina? Or? Yeah, like if you go stern in, for example, yeah. like you would have a pretty hard time seeing where you're going from the upper helm station. So you could just... So here you see everything. Even side two, you yeah. see really everything. Got some storage here. It's a good fender line storage. We've got... Oh, I see how it is. Oh, this come on, here. Victoria. Can, can we please have something better to look at? Thank come you. Come on. I thought you're gonna That's say like. That's how you do it. I thought she's gonna say like, "Come on, Victoria, can we please have Rico and say it too?" Oh, okay. Well then, fine. Let's see who who can pose best. Get in there, Rico. Oh boy, no, I'm not competing with these two. <laughs> this is not how tours go, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anchor oh. is your domain. Go oh, ahead. This is unique. I've never seen this before, actually. So we have two anchors, uh, just one windlass. Depending on what kind of ground you want to anchor in, you just switch the anchors. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of chain. It's a lot of chain. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a really safe walkway because it's a little bit taller than you would maybe expect, and feels really safe. Well, this. Welcome to the upper <laughs> cockpit. I would say you could easily sit here with six. We have a little drink fridge, a little bar area here, and our access up to the Sky Lounge, as Jason mentioned, we're gonna show you last. What's really cool is that the owners of this boat added this shade. Mm. They did a proper holes for it, so it's a really nice, usable space down there. So it's for this and area, you definitely want that. They've got, obviously, side shades as well. So you could really enclose this on a super bright sunny day or just bring it down for the side where the sun is coming in and it would keeps it really nice and cool even on a hot day like today it's way more comfortable in the shade great should we go in the air condition yes, <laughs> yes. let's yes. do it it's a quick sidebar here because in our last video we mentioned that we are headed back to the Tuamotu yes. which is a very remote set of atolls in the South Pacific some are inhabited some are not and food is definitely scarce especially fresh veggies and it was when we sailed there for several months that we first realized we should probably start taking a supplement for our lack of vegetables and complete diet we didn't really get serious about it until this past year and now that we're kind of traveling and living out of suitcases super on the go and not always eating correctly we're really happy that we've done that which is why we have started taking Athletic Greens. And now I know you've probably heard this whole spiel a million times, but it has honestly completely changed our morning routine. No, oh, sorry. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> no! <laughs> this is the only bad thing about starting before coffee. Not always with it. Oh, man. And it all started when I read the directions. I know, crazy, right? To optimize nutrient absorption, drink before breakfast on an empty stomach. And normally I can't take vitamins or supplements or even really drink green tea in the morning on an empty stomach. It just kind of makes me feel funny. But AG1 is completely different. It tastes great, I feel good, and it's not a chore to choke it down. It's actually a pleasurable experience. And now this is our morning routine. We wake up first thing in the morning and we put our one scoop or our one travel pack into our AG container with eight to 12 ounces of water, give it a good shake, and then we head outside and we do some stretches, we do some exercises, and just give ourselves 20 to 30 minutes just for us to start the day. So why AG1 over everything else? Well, it's a full spectrum of nutritional needs. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics in one convenient daily serving. 
This special blend of ingredients helps our body's nutritional needs and supports gut health, immunity, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's quick, it's easy, and it's got everything our bodies need for optimal performance, so we don't have to carry any other vitamins or supplements. And right now, Athletic Greens will give you a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, which is really great for bone and heart health, plus five travel packs for free with your first order. So just click the link in the description below to scoop that up. Ha, <laughs> uh, <laughs> scoop it. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, all right, <laughs> back to it. Welcome to the salon. Well, yeah, it feels good in here. <laughs> <sighs> what definitely stands out right away is the height. Like the ceiling height is just really, really good headroom. It also makes the room feel really big. Yeah, so you have windows, you know, all around. It's not a very large salon. That's because we've got a really large dinette up there. So it's still a good seating for at least six. Oh, <laughs> easily six people, cocktails hanging out, lounging. Ice maker for your cocktails. Mm -hmm. And then... I see a wine fridge yes. over in the corner. And we also have a pop-up TV that comes up from right here. So everything you need to enjoy the salon. So on our starboard, we have this really good sized dinette. It's raised, it's nice, like all the way around you have windows. I mean, mm -hmm. almost 360, which is really nice. And this table is big enough for the both of us to work on our computers, still have a view of everything around. I think this is a, a nice spot. So now that we're into the galley, I feel like now we're starting to kind of get into like the meat and potatoes of living. Because a galley is something I look hard at whenever I'm looking at a live aboard vessel. But what about for you? Because these yachts are so different. What are like some of the key things that you look for? A good amount of stateroom, um, headroom. I think that's really important. That's the mm -hmm. last thing you want to do is just constantly bump your head somewhere. A good galley, which means two people can function in. Yeah, which, which I feel like... I think this would be good, you know, somebody can help out, another person is cooking. Also a good engine room and really good owner suite, which just makes you feel like you have the space and you don't feel like you're giving up the space that you would have, let's say, in a condo. And a really good interior entertainment space. Just let's see it. what's in here. Freaking what? Wait. Oh, yeah. massive refrigerator and freezer, like what I would not give. Oh, good, good, good size. Yeah. <laughs> Good size. It's a lot bigger than the fridge in our old boat. Oh, a lot bigger than the fridge in our boat, that's for sure. Lots more storage. We've got a four burner cooktop. Oh, yeah. Right. There's good appliances in here. So this is all like residential style. Yeah, that's a big microwave. Which micro oven. Yeah. We have this... a trash compactor. Yeah, wow. Because that's always a thing. What do you do with the trash when you're out cruising? Heck yeah, and if you can. Great to have. Yeah, that's actually, that would be quite the thing, actually. <gasps> yes. That's my thing. And yeah. it's a really oh, good size luscious. for two. <laughs> two. Would you like to marvel at this level? Oh. <laughs> this is all I ever wanted on a new boat, and I'm not getting it in our new HH44. Because really? It's just not a big enough galley. Ah, oh, this is a really good size for two. So nice. One little drawer, yep. you just clean okay. the yep. dishes, and yep. then you just pull them out, you eat, and then you put them back in and wash it every day. Yeah. It's way more efficient than me, he uses way less water. Yeah. Everybody who watches our channel knows that's like a big thing. I gotta have. The dishwasher. There are, there are small solutions, you know, you just, you, maybe it's not too late. Oh, so we've got three guest cabins down there, plus the owner suite, which is aft. We're looking at a freaking four bedroom condo wow. here, people. Actually a pretty grand staircase wow. for... <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is the port side cabin. Bunk beds, little storage cabinet. Storage underneath, storage up here. Holy cow, there's storage everywhere. A little TV. And storage here too. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That's a, one, that's a one person closet. It's a whole, it's another cabin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we have a head and walk-in shower, which has technically three functions. It's an ensuite for the port side cabin. It is also the <laughs> <laughs> the shared hat for the starboard side cabin and it functions as your day hat. One person, one and a half, two person Ooh, shower, what is it? Definitely a uh, yeah, one person shower. Yeah. This is a like an aquarium. This is just another guest cabin. Big closet. The hanging another. lockers in all the staterooms are really impressive. It's just so much storage in this space, which another great liveaboard feature. 
You always want to have a good amount of storage. And a lot of paperwork. Yep. <laughs> well, that's not all. That's not all. You wait, can call there's now. No. Wait, there's more. Oh. You got a his and a hers closet. Nice. Or, or a hers, hers and a hers. hers. Oh, his and his. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just take it all for yourself. Yes. Here. It's a really bright cabin. All the way forward, usually on the motor yachts, you're going to compromise the headroom. It's usually kind of comes down like this, and it's much smaller. This is very tall. I mean, this whole place we walked around, like anyone six feet, feet six two would have a really easy time on yeah. this yacht and this size of a vessel that's a really cool feature this is very open it feels very big legit very condo airy. on the water for sure very similar yeah oh look this so is big really cabinet. big wow that's a lot i could like I could see a family of you know of three easily like living here you know with even like a teenage kid it's just plenty of room this would be a good good secondary cabin Definitely one person shower. Still one person shower. <laughs> this is a really unique cabin. It's technically almost like a captain's cabin, but of course it could also be a guest cabin because this is a 66 footer. It's a really good owner operated vessel. So this is kind of cool here. If this would be a crew or captain's quarters, you have a little bit of a work desk here, which comes in pretty handy if you want to do your paperwork or trip planning. And then you have two bunk beds on this one here and your laundry facilities as well. You've got the washer and the dryer and this would be the hanging locker. It's also a good size. And the access to the engine room. Oh, cool. Which we should check out right now. Oh, this is a dream. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> this is definitely very different than our old boat and very different than <laughs> your guys' old boat, right? Holy cow. First of all, the most present are the two main engines, which are 800 horsepower Caterpillars, diesel. Jeez. We actually have two chillers over there, and they're running, so the whole boat is air conditioned at the moment, so yeah. they're creating a little bit of noise for us. Very well air conditioned. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have our engines here. What's interesting? We have a good access to the primary fuel filters, the Rayco yeah. filters right here. We have the sea strainer for the starboard engine, and we have a big fire suppression unit here. This is a sea fire unit. One thing that's very curious to me is, do you start the engines down here or is this like an auxiliary start? This is just for maintenance reasons. Okay. When you do an engine service, you want to start them, stop them. On larger vessels, super yachts and mega yachts, you have an engineer in the engine room at all times. Yeah. So they would start the engines actually from down below. Yeah. So pretty cool right behind you. Do you know what this is? <laughs> Not trying to put you on the spot, but any guesses? This is a vacuum cleaner. It's a central vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> central vac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the way aft of the engine room, yeah. we have battery selector switches, manual selector switches. Yeah. We do have the primary generator with a little bit of a toolbox on top. Inverters. In battery chargers, also all the way mounted aft on the aft uh, wall of the engine room. Yeah. In the hydraulic pack all the way mounted aft there is for the fin stabilization. Ah, so you can stabilize the vessel so it doesn't do the... You don't have the rolling, you get rid of the rolling motion. Completely underway. or just a little bit? Pretty much completely. So the only thing you cannot get rid of is the up and down, up and down mo yeah. movement. Yeah. Unless you have hydrofoils. Yeah. That's a different video. And then you go on top of the water. Yeah. This would be such an upgrade compared to what we're used to on a sailboat because there's so much room. Even though we're sort of, you know, cramped down a little bit, I can access everything. So this would definitely make it way easier to do oil changes and service. How long do you think it'll take to service these engines? I mean, both engines, just a regular like 100 hour on yeah. annual service kind yeah. of. I want to say in one day you have both engines serviced. About yeah. the same as what I, it would take yeah. me about three or four hours to do the the little Yanmar 40s. Yeah. It's the same. No, it's like, just easy, more like oil. you said, it's easy access. Like you can see all the big filters, you get the yeah. oil filters there, you get the fuel filter. It's it's very easy to get to. Like even on the outboard side, yeah, I have no problem to get to it. Plenty of room to walk yeah. around. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was nice. We gotta see that owner suite. Oh. So we're gonna go all the way aft. And what's really cool about this yacht is it's a separate entrance into the owner suite. So it's very private. Your whole control panel is here. All your switchovers, your generator, everything is right here. It's right next to the owner suite. It's very convenient. All right, we have our full beam owner suite. Is this a king size? It feels like a king size bed to me, I and I can definitely is. tell you it is a very nice mattress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what you get on the aft cabin motor yachts, is what it we call it. So it basically means that your main cabin, your owner suite will be all the way aft. It's this raised 
cockpit gave us this space. It's really, really cool headroom. Storage in this cabin is insane. I can't open it all because we'll be here forever, but you've got all of these, like tons. You've got drawers and then check out this hanging locker with a safe. And then on this side, we have, I'll close this for now. We'll get to the head in a second. Huge desk area. So this could be another potential workspace that you would never have to set up and break down and all of that kind of stuff. So I don't know. This Wait, open it. Victoria's all, she opens every cabinet on every book. <laughs> Come on, makeup artist. Okay, okay. That is kind of impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you add some lights on there and that's pretty rad. Huge storage area in there. Ooh. Yeah. Comfortable chair, more closet space. I mean, that's Jason's closet. Yeah. <laughs> a short one. Storage, storage, storage. That is the name of the game. You've got a his and her sink. Not that you necessarily need that, but that's what fancy people do. They have their own. They don't share. So in our videos, we rate our showers by how many people you can fit in, just to give you a perspective. Mm -hmm. this, so this is a definitely a two very comfortable two-person yeah. shower. And we could easily... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why we made it like this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Different channel! No! <laughs> but wait, if you call now. This is the feature that we couldn't show you from outside because the door was locked, but now we are unlocking it and we get to step outside directly wait, from the owner's cabin. <laughs> Uh, before we go, I just wanted to point out, in Florida, you're looking for features like this. This is a mosquito screen. You would use this all the time. How cool what? is this? Just come out of your cabin and can have a couple of chairs, have a little coffee here. Yeah, so mm, nice. Bright. Yeah, all right, let's go all the way up. Oh, it's air conditioned too. Yes. So this is the thing we said we were saving for last because we feel that this is the best and i feel like if you and i were to purchase this boat and i mean jason and i not you you and i but we <laughs> we can talk about that too <laughs> this would be the space i think we would have to like rock paper scissors for as to like who gets to have this space we call it a man cave you could call it a whatever you want but it's totally separate from everything else enclosed air conditioned it's got the helm you've got crazy visibility a whole lounge area, a table, like this would become my office. Oh, you just took yeah. the office. <laughs> this would become my office. Started with paper, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. up, just out of the door. Done. Let's see how it is. So what yes. do you guys like about this? It just depends where you're boating, right? Yeah. In Southern California, it wouldn't necessarily be the space you would need because a lot of the time, perfect temperature's out. But if you're in Florida and it's yeah. super, super hot, this is space you're gonna use all the time, Pacific Northwest, and you want Pacific wanna, Northwest, or long, if you do long passages, long passages it definitely cold, comes in pretty handy being you would protected. Use this space as well. yeah. yeah, so I think it's just a very good, like you said, sort of convertible space, however you wanna use it. I think it's a great home office. This is a high-low table, so yeah. you can set this at the higher height to be able to work and stuff. Also a great space when you're underway for everybody to hang out. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. How about this for sundowners? Wow. Yeah. Not a bad spot. So I like how they just left it open completely, sort of a blank canvas. Wouldn't yeah. this be where your tender would be? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But once it's in the water, you've got some foldable chairs you can put out here. You can have loungers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys do sundowners in your videos all the time. I think this would be the spot. Yeah. It almost looks like there's a, a canopy or something. Oh yeah. oh yeah yeah there is definitely a, a shade structure shape. yeah yeah, yeah which is really nice they've it's kind of like a, a, a tent tent shape yeah so it's a really really good shaded area yeah exactly. there's a pickup in the center mm -hmm. you got a thousand pound tender lift here a, a crane hydraulic crane which can obviously go over the side or over the back and then you retrieve the tender or launch the tender you have the receptacles in the floor for the cradles where the tender would rest in when you have it on deck Anything up here we need to look at? So you got a life raft up there. You got the track vision, satellite TV antenna, an open array radar, a weather station right here in the aft, and then a whole bunch of GPS antennas and VHF antennas, as well as your navigation lights. Cool. I'm very excited about this portion. This is quite the helm. But I'm also noticing that we've got loads of security cameras, which we've seen all throughout the tour. Including? The engine room. Yeah, comes in pretty handy. If you ever feel like, oh, something is up, you can at least see if everything's okay. Now this is way more than I'm ever used to. So explain to me what all, because I mean, navigation is pretty obvious, but even mm -hmm. the fact that there's two of these, they're not obviously both throttle. So what's happening here? So 
This is a 2008, so everything newer you would see now, you would have one set of electronic controls, which are shift and throttle controls at the same time. These ones are separate, so you have your separate shift controls and throttle controls for both engines. So if you want to just go idle forward, you just push these both forwards without touching the throttles. And then if you want to give it an extra juice, you put the throttles up. We have our bow and stern thruster control, really convenient, right next to the throttle control, so easy access. Then you have a tank monitor here where you can switch between the tanks and get your tank levels. This is the control for the hydraulic fins, for the stabilizer fins. Then this looks like one of the original chart plotters. This is an upgraded chart plotter, both are Raymarine. Then we have engines. the engine monitors, which are separate monitors, the rudder indicator. Step sounder, autopilot, double VHF radios, searchlight, the fireboy indicator, or sea fire. Oh, okay, that's what I was wondering what that was. And then what about, like, this is says, like, bow down. So these are your trim taps. Oh, Since okay. Since this is a planing hole, you mm -hmm. trim the bow all the way down to get the yeah. movement out of the water. Yeah. And then you have your windshield wiper control right here. Man, it looks like a video game. Even looks the like older boats look like a video like game. game. <laughs> We're going to take you guys on the big boat with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I get lost there, I was like, oh my god, that's a lot. It's actually a pretty it's well laid out helm. It's not too complicated. <laughs> so now that we've done the full tour, we've gone through the whole boat, we're going to dive into some numbers. The nitty gritty, which is also why I have my phone here, because I won't remember even half of what I needed to ask. <laughs> First one, I think, is what would slippage cost somewhere here in the Fort Lauderdale area? Slippage, dockage, what do you call it? Oh, yeah. Dockage. Yeah. Dockage. Yeah. It's something yeah, more we get, in dockage. Yeah. Something we get asked all the time in all our videos. A lot of the times people say, please include in every single tour how much that, you know, the slip would be. And I'm like, if you're looking at this boat in Los Angeles trying to, you know, boat in Florida, and you're going to move it over to LA. It's not going to do you any good because just from marina to marina costs are completely different mm -hmm. but to put this in perspective the cost on this slip fee is about three thousand dollars a month that includes electricity water everything all in and if you would just go maybe half an, an hour up yeah it's it gonna drop down like half, half, half the price, the price yeah. yeah so it's a really sort of a difficult question to answer so I always say if you're serious about getting a boat just start shopping around you don't need to have a boat to know just start making phone calls to the marina start seeing what the prices are in your area because it's going to be very different and the only thing you'd really need to know is how long the yacht is how, how wide, wide it is mm -hmm. and that's it and the no, draft yeah so if you've got a certain size of boat you're looking for you'd call up and ask for a quote and that'll start to help you budget out yeah. what that's going to look like. But also in perspective, now we're talking about like affordable liveaboard, right? So it's kind of versus a house and what are you having? And if you had a condo or whatever, you're going to have HOAs. Yeah. Oh yeah. So and in Florida, for example, HOAs are really high. So if you're going to compare it to what we just toured as a four bedroom condo, yeah. $2,000 HOA a month yeah. is guaranteed. Yeah. You're yeah. probably looking at more. Yeah. So you're probably looking somewhere at 2500 for that big of a condo. And price wise, that big of a condo here in Miami or Fort Lauderdale would probably be one and a half. Got close to two million. Two million two, in yeah. this market. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. That many, for, for that many bedrooms. So you could consider a boat like this a bargain if you were considering buying a condo on the ocean. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it gives you the option of diving into the lifestyle, but with the still kind of the safety net of being close to shore and Super still dark. having shore amenities <laughs> yeah. yes the bugs are also a problem yeah, the, bug, Again, the bugs why, also very interested yeah, why, in the, why the bug screen was a really big feature <laughs> you're seeing why uh, and why you want to get off of the dock and move to an anchorage and start exploring which is another thing is fuel economy yeah so let's talk yes. about fuel so let's just break yeah. some break some stereotypes yeah. here because that is something we're constantly you know people think it is way more yeah. than what it is it's gonna cost me five thousand dollars to move that boat to wherever well, and granted, hard, hard like data. on the boat we just toured, for example, um, if you go, you know, fast cruising, 18 knots, 20 knots, um, whatever the boat or the cruising speed or fast cruising speed of the vessel is, you burn a lot of fuel, no question. There's two 800 horsepower Caterpillar motors in there, 1600 horsepower combined. So you're probably burning 50, 60 gallons an hour, which, yeah, that is a lot. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. But now, like, if you really take it easy and you slow it down to below 10 knots, I mean, you burn maybe 10 gallons an hour. You can yeah. probably even get it lower than that. And that's very efficient for the size of the boat. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like that's 
what some people don't understand. Like, yes, you have the ability to go a heck of a lot faster, which means you can get out of a situation and you can certainly outrun a storm, sure. potentially in a lot of those cases. But for the most part, power boaters and sailors were all typically traveling at very similar, very similar speeds. speeds. Eight to 10 to 12 knots. Yep. That's kind of the general cruising zone. And they're doing that for fuel efficiency. We're doing that because, well, that's just how fast we move. <laughs> but, it's, but also sometimes it's comfort too. It just depends on, yep. on oh, the sea yeah. conditions. Sometimes you cannot always go 15, 20 knots. You know, yeah. it's just not comfortable. If yeah. it's bigger seas, it yeah. won't be nice. So now let's put that into perspective. If you decided to go this route, you kind of had like a live aboard, taking a trip, actually going somewhere. So let's take ourselves to, to Bimini. Bahamas. Bimini, Bahamas. That's the yeah. closest spot from here. So that's about 40 plus minus nautical miles. So we did some rough yeah. math. So we said we were going to use about 50 gallons probably to get to Bimini. If you take a lot of fuel and you don't need to necessarily go to a fuel dock in Florida, they're actually mobile fuel services. They come out with a tanker yeah. and then just fuel you right at the dock and you get pretty good fuel prices. It's like a bulk um, discount because you're exactly. buying so many gallons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we said that to get that 50 gallons, it would easily be under $200. For under $200, you've now taken your mini condo with you over to the Bahamas. With eight people on board. Yeah. With eight people on board. There's no way you could travel to the Bahamas for that cheap. No. No. Well, right. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Even a sailboat, you have the rigging, you have the sails, you have all these other things that you have to think about that cost money. So even though it might only cost us $10 in diesel to get over to the Bimini, it, we might, you know, blow out a sail and that could cost us a couple thousand dollars. So. <laughs> I would say a powerboat in the long term is probably slightly yeah. more expensive because yeah. of the engines. That's really the biggest thing. But it's not, I don't think the, the gap is, is so wide, especially when you're staying coastal. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's very true. It, sailboats start to really, you know, stretch that budget and that's and it's because of yeah. sails and it's because we're now we can use the wind to power us and we've got distance, we've got legs. So that's where that's at. But there are other power boats as well that you could still take technically around the world. And if you cruise at those slower speeds, it honestly sometimes isn't any more than what you would have spent on a flight. And now you're bringing your whole house with you. So it's just yep. such a totally drastically different lifestyle. But I think it's a lot more approachable than what one might first think. Yeah, and it's also, you know, there, there is a bit of an intimidation that comes with sailing and the knowledge. And there's a lot of extra equipment and you need to know what to do. And there are people that are ready for it and they can do it. And there are people that can. The physical abilities are really important. And, you know, so it's just there's, there's a bit more danger when it comes to certain weather and being out there and dealing with the sails. Yeah. So I just think there is a place for everybody in this boating lifestyle. That's really where we came from and that's how our channel started. We really love both sides. And so we feel, truly feel like you don't have to wait and save forever to start to live this lifestyle. There's a boat for everybody out there for the right price, for your budget. You can start now and upgrade. That's what we always recommend. And there is an affordable way of doing power boating besides yeah. sailing. So, so we talked about the boat that we saw today. So we, that gives you some pricing. Mm -hmm. One last question on pricing for this. And then I want to talk about your liveaboard, which was the consumption for say like the generator. So daily, consumption of fuel. Let's also talk about that because on a boat like this, while you're living at anchor, you are going to need to run that generator. So what would you estimate? So, I mean, on this boat, you probably start the generator up as soon as you leave the dock, um, just because you want to use your air conditions. If you don't want to use your air conditions and you have a decent size inverter for your refrigeration and freezers and the, just the, the basic usability of the boat, you don't need the generator necessarily. You just need a large battery bank. So on this boat, if you start the generator, you're probably looking at a gallon and a half an hour, maybe. Like a, maybe a gallon an hour. I mean, depending, I don't know how big the motor was actually yeah. in the generator, <laughs> yeah. but let's say like, let's say roughly yeah. a gallon yeah. an hour. And that, um, that sounds about right, because that's similar-ish. So three-ish dollars an hour to have all of your household appliances running, yes. including yes. AC. Air have, conditioning, have AC, which have, is a Yeah, big have AC, uh, AC current. So now, like, if you go fast forward a couple of years and look at newer boats, a lot of power boats now incorporating solar panels as well, yeah. not just on the sailing catamarans or sailing monohulls. Mm -hmm. And having a larger lithium ion house bank, which gives you the ability not to run the generator throughout the night and just use the batteries. During the day, you have the solar panels helping to trickle charge. It's not going to be enough yeah. to completely come back to 100% if you run multiple air conditioning units, mm -hmm. but it will minimize the amount of time the generator has to run. Yeah. So 
there is a step, little by little, we're getting towards a little bit more of a greener and better way of living. A little more our autonomous. Boats. But yeah. our yes. boat was a great example because on our boat, so we we used to live for eight years on Meridian 408, and the way our boat was set up is we actually did not need to run generator because all our Correct. refrigerator, everything was 12 volt DC running because we boat in Southern California, you pretty much never need air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. So most of our trips, like we didn't even run, like we would go to Catalina and we would mm -hmm. run a generator for one hour. A day. A day just yeah. to just charge up the batteries, have everything yeah. good. Like we never ran the generator. So it's just, it really depends where yeah. you're boating. And that yeah. boat was set up that Very way. It was true. perfect. Very we didn't true. need it yeah. for the fridge. And I think that that's kind of the point. Like, yes, there are some boats that are going to be more energy intensive, but it's completely possible to have a boat that only runs the generator once a day, just for a quick top up, yep. one hour, that's it. So, because that is the other big assumption from a lot of us that are on sailboats. So, you know, we try to think of ourselves as so self-sufficient, but the reality is a lot of times sailboats and a boat like yours, you're probably running the generator almost equal amounts. Less yeah. for us, but we're kind of an extreme of case. Course. So to bring it back, you just sold your boat, but tell us about, it was your home for eight years. What was it? And what was the price range on that boat? Mm -hmm. So we lived on uh, Meridian 408. We had yep. a custom extended swim platform. So technically it was 47 feet, uh, but the model was 408, 42, 42 footer. So if you pulled one up right now and you were searching for your boat, what would the price range be? In this market, which yeah. you guys all know, it's a bit inflated. <laughs> I would say you could get that boat depending on the year and the condition, somewhere between 180 to maybe 280. 280. And do you think you could have found a house for that price range no. where you lived? Absolutely, absolutely not. Because you were in LA, absolutely no. not. Yeah, no. so you lived in, in LA. You had less than a $200,000 home. Plus, you had a boat which you took often to Catalina Island. We use that boat all the time, and that's a big thing. Like you cannot take your home anywhere. You cannot just say, "Hey." Friends, come over and we'll take it for harbor cruise. Like, take we don't condo. have that option. It work. Not in a condo you, or yeah, a house. So yeah. that, that we use it all the time. Yeah. And that's a big thing. Like, if you're gonna go into this lifestyle, plan to use it. The easiest way to mm -hmm. use it is to live on it. But if you have certain commitments, you can. As long as you use your boat frequently, all the time, it's totally worth it. It financially makes sense. 100% agree. It's, it's those boats that sit there and don't get used for months at a time. And those are the people that are happy when they sell them, you know, that because makes they sense. never enjoyed them and it was just a money pit. But yeah. when you live but on it, it's like having a second vacation home you never use. It's yeah. the same thing. Yes, it will go up in value, but it's still costing you because nothing is getting used there. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. it's never a good thing. You gotta use you gotta use your boat. So maintenance. Yeah. We were kind of talking about maintenance and it sounds like maintenance costs are gonna be very similar. So we usually budget anywhere from like ten to fifteen percent of the value of our boat per year for mm -hmm. maintenance and you said similar very realistic, you. yeah, absolutely. I mean how handy are you? That's of course important. You can save um, even more. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not handy at all, at all, definitely budget maybe twenty percent. But if you're a somewhat handy, I would say same, 10, 15, that's been our mm -hmm. Yeah, well, also depending, are you, are you managing the boat yourself? Yeah. Not meaning doing the physical work yourself, but are you managing the boat or are you hiring a management company? Then of course, um, you're probably gonna be closer to the 20%. Yeah, exactly. But Thank for you. a liveaboard, you manage it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you be better be yeah. managing well, yeah. it yourself. Yeah. You're living yeah. on yeah. it. Yeah, just the same as us. When you started, you didn't know anything. You learned it all as you went. We've learned as, as we've gone along. So it's not that you have to go into it with heaps of knowledge and that's the beauty of living at like a dock and starting coastal is it gives you that security blanket you can always call for help yeah I yeah. mean you guys are just nuts you crazy, <laughs> crazy. Nah, nah, you're crazy but, but <laughs> let's the way talk the... about the boat they're building now then we'll see who's crazy <laughs> but the way we're standing here right now you guys are sailors we are now power boaters or we were and we are I mean we still like sailing yeah but I don't really like this polar polarization yeah. of these two groups of people yeah. we like yeah. you and yeah, I, yeah. I always say, like, I mean, you're all right any yeah. day, for power boaters. Like, for yeah. me, any day on the water is a good day. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter where I'm on. Exactly. Right, you know? there, there is, we're not that far away from each other, just like you said. And I think that's really important yeah. to, to respect each other and to have an understanding for um, there's space for everybody in this lifestyle. Including you. So, and what did you think of your first yacht tour? So I have to say that that is a lot of boat. It's certainly more boat than the two of us would ever need. But what I thought was really interesting is the fact that you can have this four bedroom condo on the water and it can absolutely be operated by two people. So wildly different everything from what we do. And they just, yeah, a lot, a lot more comfort just at the end of the day. There's just no way around that. So you guys make sure to be on a lookout 
on our channel, Naughty Guys, that's N-A-U-T-I Guys, because we're taking them out on a boat ride, that's what they think. Well, we're doing, we're gonna do a boat ride, but we will have a bunch of questions prepared. We'll ask them some really juicy questions about their new build that they have been not telling you or that you guys have been dying so to know. So we, we're gonna try to get more information out so you guys can get the dirty details yes, of the so. new boat build. We're gonna really pin them down and we're gonna make them answer those questions. Yes. See you later. See you.